Well, good morning, Kid Nation. It's good to have you on here this morning on this Tuesday morning. Boy, it was warm again yesterday. I think it's supposed to be warm again today. So you guys be careful. If you go outside to play, make sure you drink some water, put on sunscreen, wear a hat, do all the things that we're supposed to do. I want to make sure you guys are safe, but I also want you to be able to get outside and play because we need that. Well, anyway, yesterday in our devotional, we were talking about Nehemiah. We were just kind of, we started off in chapter one of Nehemiah and we realized or we learned why Nehemiah was sad. He was sad because Jerusalem, the city that he was from, was uh, decimated. The walls had been broken down and they hadn't rebuilt them. And the Jewish people in Jerusalem were just kind of, had just kind of given up. Like they couldn't win um, and people were going to attack, attack them and they couldn't do anything about it. So let's get into more of Nehemiah. We're going to be in chapter 2, uh, verses 4 to 15 today. And so I would really encourage you guys, as, if, as we're going through these, and I try and remind you about this occasionally, to go ahead and read, because we're not reading through every scripture, but go ahead and read those scriptures. So chapter 2, go ahead and read all of chapter 2 if you get a chance. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in there. I think I told you guys yesterday, Nehemiah is really one of my favorite uh, characters in the Bible. I think he was incredibly brave. Um, and he wasn't a person of power before he decided to make a change, make a, you know an impact uh, for the people that he cared about, he was the uh, he was another king's butler. So <clears throat> let me go ahead and and uh, let's start reading. Uh, when Nehemiah told the king why he was so sad, King Art, remember we agreed to call him King Art because I, I have a hard time saying that name. King Art said, "You should go to the land of Judah and rebuild the walls of the city where your people live." The king then gave Nehemiah a letter for the keeper of the king's forest to supply him with wood for the city gates. He even sent along army officers to protect the group of Jews traveling back with Nehemiah. When Nehemiah arrived in Jerusalem, he did not tell anyone why he had come. After three days, he and a few close friends snuck out at night to inspect the broken wall. They stumbled around in the dark going from one broken gate to another, looking what needed to be done to rebuild the wall. Then they went back home. How should I go about tackling a big task? This was a big job, rebuilding all these gates and the, and the damaged parts of the wall. You're not likely to be asked to build a city wall, but you may have a school project or a task that seems like a wall. For Nehemiah, building a wall with heavy stones all around the city was going to be a big job too big to rush into without careful planning. So here are some thoughts that will help you get started on your task. Number one, pray for God's help before you get started. Can I share this with you, Kid Nation? And you can ask Miss Jennifer about this because she's watched me do this. There have been so many times when there's something around the house or something on the car that needs to be fixed, and I have no idea how to fix it. And I'll, I would just sit down and pray and say, Lord, I need your help because I don't know how to do this. And somehow we work through it and we get it fixed. And, and when we get to the end, we remember it was not me. It was Jesus. He was the one that enabled me to be able to do that. So always pray before you get started. Ask God to give you good ideas and to guide you as you work. Set some goals. If the project has to be completed by a certain day, divide the work into tasks for each day. Remember, it usually takes a bit longer than you think, so give yourself a little bit of extra time if you can. Plan the task. What materials will you need? How much will it cost? Will you need help? What could go wrong? And then do your best. God is honored by a job well done. Whether you need to complete a huge task or make an important decision, don't rush into it. First talk to the Lord about it and he will make your plan succeed. And here's today's bonus scripture. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? And that's Luke chapter 14, verse 28. So here's the thing. Sometimes we have to do jobs that are just seem way too big, way too big, too much work. Uh, it's going to take way too long to do this. Well, but we still have to get it done. And so how do we do that? Let's say that we had a job that was going to, if we just started and worked hard all the way to the end, it was going to take us 10 hours. Okay. Now we have a month to get this done. 10 hours is a long time 
to work just straight through. And it's not many people can do that. Some can, but most can't. And, you know, we need a break and some we got to stop for lunch and get tired and whatever. But what if we, but I bet that all of you that are watching this could work really hard for a half hour, really hard. Like you could go really hard at, at a job for a half hour. Well, how many half hours are there in 10 hours? Well, there's 20 of them. And you have a month to complete it, which means you got about 30 days. So if you started today and worked 30 minutes on that every day, then you would be done with it 10 days early. Can you imagine taking a big task like that and actually being done with it ahead of schedule and being ready? You know, maybe it, maybe it was a paper for school or something, some homework or maybe a science project or something like that. And 10 days left to go and you're done. And, and your friends are like, oh my gosh, I haven't even started yet. Have you been the person that's procrastinating? Let me tell you, Miss Pastor Randy, is, when I was in school, I was a procrastinator and I waited to the last minute. And because of that, I never got, um, I never did as good a job as I could. It always ended up being harder than it needed to be. And it was lots of stress and worry. And my mom would be upset with me. Start now, make a plan, work a little bit each day, get it done. It's an amazing process. And then you'll get to the end of that and you'll think, you know what? That wasn't so hard. And so the next thing that comes along that's even bigger, because when you get in the next grade, they're going to have bigger assignments for you or your parents might give you a bigger chore to do. It won't seem that hard because you already know that you can get big things done. And that's amazing. Well, let's go ahead and pray and then we'll get on with our Tuesday. I think today is going to be a really great day for you guys. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this this morning that we can meet together and look at your word. And then we can learn practical things to apply to our lives every day. Father, I thank you for the ability to plan out a task and to be able to get it done in small steps when the big steps just seem too big to take. We're just really grateful for that, Lord. We love you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I love you, Kid Nation. I miss you guys a lot, and I look forward to seeing you real soon. Bye-bye.